So, all right, let's figure out the tibia. All right, you've got to get your tibia oriented correctly. You've got this large kind of triangular area at one end, and it has these two depressions in it. That's where those condyles are going to rock. So that's going to be your proximal end. So we know that's the proximal end, this is the distal end. Well, now we've got to figure out what's front and back and all that. Well, if you go to the proximal end, you're going to see a bump on one side. And you can actually feel that. If you feel right under your knee, you'll feel that little bump sticking out. That's called the tibial tuberosity. So that means this has to be the anterior side. So this is your the proximal end, and then you've got that tib tibial tuberosity. So that's anterior. Well, now you've got to decide, well, is it the... And it's sharp. And it's sharp. The What's front, sharp? Oh, your shin. Oh, yeah, yeah. And the shin is sharp right there. You have a sharp edge on it right there. Okay? And that's why you get, when you bump your shin, you get easily cut and bruised because it does have that long, sharp point there. All right. Or edge, not point. All right. If you're trying to figure out is it, if this is a right tibia or a left tibia, you got to go to the proximal end. And you distal. see on the distal end, <laughs> it's really getting late. Go to the distal end. And you see you have this little kind of pinched part pulling down right here. This is called the medial malleolus. All right, well, I just told you which side this is. If that's the medial malleolus, then if I'm trying to put this in my leg, let me stick my pretty boots up here. Okay, is that the medial side? Yes, so this has to be my left leg. Because if I... <laughs> Keep it on tape. We're not stopping. Caught a little cuff here. On the right side, and the medial malleolus is not medial, it's now lateral. <laughs> Stop laughing, they came here. You got to have some comic relief here. All right, so this has to be your um, left tibia because you want this medial malleolus to be on the medial or inside line. That's what you feel on your ankle. Yeah, so when you go down and you feel on your ankle, you're going to feel two little ankle bones, and you probably see them sticking out on my boots right there and right there. Well, that's the medial malleolus, and this is going to be your lateral malleolus. And your lateral malleolus is going to be formed by the uh, fibula, which is going to come down. Let's see if I can get this all put together like this. I don't think I have quite the right bones here. Um, no, because that's that. I've got the wrong bones here. No, i got it right. That's, yeah, that's how it goes. Okay, so you have your medial malleolus and then your lateral malleolus is going to be formed by your fibula okay and so that's how you can tell what your right and left on your uh, tibia so let's make sure we know all the parts of the tibia all right you've got your um, condyles up here and that's the articular surfaces of your condyles and again this tibial tuberosity and this sharp edge up here tell you this is anterior and then this malleolus down here is the medial malleolus so this is the inside line, so that makes that the medial articular surface of the condyle, and that makes this the lateral surface of the condyle right there. So that's those two. And then the only other thing you need to know on this is the tibial tuberosity, which tells you if you're on the anterior side or the posterior side. And then of course on your uh, fibula, the only thing you need to know on the fibula is this end that has kind of this long tapered and flattened end right there that makes that lateral malleolus, and so that's going to be on the lateral side of your leg. Remember, fibula is on the lateral side, so la la. Fibula is lateral, and that's kind of how you keep them uh, figured out. So there's your medial malleolus and your lateral malleolus there. All right, so that's your um, lower leg. Now your lower leg... Your patella. Okay, I don't have a patella, but anyway, your patella is a little... Hang on, pause. We got one on the model. Well, there's some. It's not paused. It's what? It's not paused. Just keep going. Oh, great. You're sitting down, <laughs> sitting here taking my time. All right, your patella is actually what we call a sesamoid bone. A sesamoid bone is a bone that's laid down within a tendon to protect a joint. So you've got this joint here between your. Uh, Fibia, fibula, <laughs> okay, right. Thank Between you. your femur and your tibia, and you've got this, that makes your knee, and so the patella is kind of sitting in this big 
tendon that kind of stretches across like that and it just kind of holds it there and that's designed to protect that joint because think about how many times you're sitting on your knee so you've got that little sesamoid bone there which is a bone that's laid down within a joint to protect that joint and that's the largest sesamoid, sesamoid bone in the body that's your patella and it's kind of got a pointy end to it and that pointy end is always going to point down so that's how that goes so if you just see that little bone like that that's your patella all right then, if you look at the other end of your leg here, so now we're connecting our um, lower leg to our foot, we're going to have our tibia right here is going to come in and it's going to articulate with this bone right here. So these bones right here are all what we call tarsal bones. That's analogous to the wrist bones that you saw in the hand. So, well, we don't have one, but these are a little more odd shaped and they're not laid out in two little rows like the wrist, but these are all tarsal bones. And we want you to know two of them. This one on top that articulates with the uh, tibia, that's known as the uh, talus bone here. And that, that's how it just articulates like that. Just rides on that condyle right there. And so that's the talus. And then your fibia, fibula is gonna sit down right there on the side of it right there so that when you get it all put together, you're going to have your um, two uh, malleolus. You've got your lateral malleolus and your medial malleolus. So that sits there on that talus bone right there. Then you've got this large bone in the bottom of the foot, and that's called the calcaneus. Um, that makes up your heel right there. So that's the heel bone, and the calcaneus has a big tendon attached to it. You've called, you call it the Achilles tendon, but it's technically called the calcaneal tendon that goes up and attaches to your calf muscle. We'll talk about that when we talk about muscles, but that's your heel bone right there, the calcaneus and then the talus. Then we're not going to name any of these other ones, but then you get into what are called the metatarsals. So these are the tarsals, the ankle bones. Then you have the tarsals, which are the bones of the top of your foot. And again, you have the same numbering system that you had with hands. Uh, this first one here is your big toe. Um, these are the phalanx or phalanges of the big toe. And remember, you've only got a distal and uh, proximal phalan phalanx in your big toe. So you know that's the toe, and these are the other ones, the big toe. So you number them based on the big toe. So this is one, two, three, four, and five. And you know that this is a right foot because you've got these spaces underneath called arches. We'll come back and talk about those arches in a minute, but that tells you this is the right foot, and so this is the right first metatarsal, second, third, fourth, and fifth metatarsal. Then you have the right first proximal phalanx and right first distal phalanx. Then over here, if you just pick this little bone right here, that, that's actually two different bones right there. You can see it bends a little bit. That would be your one, two, three, fourth. So this would be your right, fourth, middle phalanx. So it's the same numbering system that you had with your fingers. So you have tarsals, talus, calcaneus are the two specific tarsals you want, need to know. And then you've got your metatarsals, one, two, three, four, five, and then all of your diff, uh, different phalanx, or phalanges. All right, back to the arches. If you look, if you think about a footprint in the sand, your medial aspect of the footprint doesn't have anything touching. You always have a big footprint and then it kind of squeezes in like that. That's because you have this arch right here, which goes the length of your foot. That's known as the longitudinal arch because it's long, longitudinal arch. You also have a transverse arch going this way. And the reason you need arches is as you put pressure on the foot, it can bend and move to support your weight. Imagine if you just had to sit on a leg that was flat like that. You can't, I mean, it's very difficult to keep your balance. So these arches allow you to shift your weight and maintain your balance. So you have the longitudinal arch, and then going this way, you have a transverse arch. Um, the only other thing I can think of about this is your big toe. We call that the hallux. And I think that's everything we need to cover.